Welcome back fellow armchair generals. This is Gamer1745 here playing Hearts of Iron 3 with Black Ice 8 and Third Reich events installed. Hope you're still enjoying this series. I presume you are if you're still with us. Now, um, I'm going to be answering this um, before you see this on the forum. Um, one of the viewers was um, pushing to um, put SS units in the east and that is a very good idea. Um, not in any way commenting as he very much points out that he supported their policies and the just that they have very good suppression um, elements and he's very right about that um, but we're all but what I am hope what I am using are these um, OPRO the order police um, units which were um, not SS though most of most of the generals were um, SS if you notice when you go to the where I have command levels, they have the S Waffen SS, but they weren't Waffen SS at all. They were um, Algemeine or General SS um, or uh, SD SS, if you will. Um, the, uh, I have trouble pronouncing the SD in the full um, thing, so I won't do it at the moment. Um, though, and you can hardly see here, but they're in police uniforms, but if you see their chest, they normally have an SS badge on them. And I looked each one up that I added, and every last one of them that I did some sources and found names and looked them up were um, SS members. So um, all the ones that I added with TRE, the generals, the Orpro generals, were all SS as well. And some of them, I have found photos in their SS uniforms and others in their police uniforms and that. And the Orpro, or, you know, the um, Order Police, Ordungspolizei, or butchering that badly too, um, were uh, under the um, Reichsführer SS, um, you know, under um, Himmler's state, though, like I say, the members weren't. Um, SS members or meeting the qualifications but they were pretty nasty too and they have pretty good um, suppression don't know if they're quite equal to the SS suppression now um, you can see they're you know thousand man units where um, well the SD are also thousand man units they're a bit cheaper so um, and I'm not sure like, let me look at the unit here current with current text, SD suppression is 37. And with current text, it obviously changes as the text go, is 17. So yes, they're, they're less suppression, um, but they're cheaper. And you can see here, um, currently our suppression level. This is the swamp. Um, yes, it will be a pain um, if a partisan unit pops up there and we can't kill it quickly because it might be able to fight a bit there. But we can look at the supplies. Basically, the supplies will flow around it just because of the um, infrastructure level gets to the point of actually being a barrier. So generally, the supplies will flow around it. So I'm just letting that go red, as it were. In multiple ways um, for lack of suppression I because I had moved some of the um, SS units mostly headquarters that were given to us by event now the the, the OPRO units that are come from um, revolver held okay, I'm sorry I'm missing I'm forgetting but I'm pretty sure these are revolver held stuff they're event given but you do pay for them so they're not free um, you just don't necessarily put them through the production queue though if you been watching my series you have seen that I've been using those and I because we did here in Poland because this is no wrong flag there we go this is Poland here it's gone sort of bad so what I have done here is um, moving in some SA units I'm sending in a couple of more here I think that should help with this 
sending the SA Bully Boys, which has under current um, text 11 suppression. The SS, the SD particularly, um, the Einsatzgruppen. And um, one of the, um, won't go into exactly who, um, German mod makers um, didn't like the, um, you know, the, the title Einsatzgruppen for naming some of the SD units, but then, um, but they very much used the SD units and felt horrified by the Einsatzgruppen, at least in that term used with the SS, because you can do Einsatzgruppen in organization totem. It's a totally different thing. Um, but I pointed out to them that the SD members um, were basically um, made up the Einsatzgruppen, the, the guys that went around and um, did the, ex the mobile execution units, basically, is what they were um, in places like Poland and, and the East is mainly where they, they functioned. As a, the ORPRO did do executions um, of Jews and others just because Though they though that wasn't their main job, and I don't think they did it on any major ongoing continual basis. But they did do in lots of executions of oh, there was a um, partisan attacks here. There's the nearest village. Let's go kill um, ten percent of the village or whatever it was as punishment as retribution. They did do a lot of that. They were baddies. I'm not trying to say that they weren't baddies or anything like that. They just maybe weren't. They were only half as bad, half as evil. You know, still evil. We're not, we're, you know, I'm not excusing, minimizing, or in any shape or form that what the, the Orpro was doing. Um, but it wasn't their primary function. And the Orpro, which, and also I've heard them called, and I believe they're exactly the same thing, but more in um, the West, the Green Police. And what they mainly did, because of various things, um, ultimately I would say the Nazis did not care, or at least the great bulk of the leadership of the Nazis did not care what the Eastern peoples thought of them. They just didn't care. But they really did care what the Western world Western Europeans thought of them. They cared what the, the Norwegians, the Swedes, the Danes, the Dutch, the Belgian, the French, the English, they cared what they thought of them. They really did. And that, that's um, an interesting thing. And so they didn't do um, and didn't allow like um, a lot of public executions of Jews when they, they did allow those in the East, and there, I think, you know, the variant levels of anti-Semitism in the East were, were generally higher um, than the anti-Semitism in the West. But they allowed um, locals to come out and just publicly murder, and you can see there's some film of this, of just street gangs right after German occupations of towns, so the locals coming out, you can see the Germans standing there watching. They're just hacking people apart in the street. Um, or stoning them or whatever, and they, and they end up dead in a um, gruesome sort of way. If my exact details aren't, aren't right, but generally they're, they are um, happening. And that they didn't do that in the West. And so the Green Police were rounding up the Jews to take them away to death camp. So the Green Police weren't, um, they were active part in played an active role in the murder of the Jews, they just weren't, um, generally speaking, um, actively murdering them in the West. They were just um, rounding them up for, you know, putting them in concentration camps that they, they at least knew that if they didn't, um, the, the average, I'm talking the average guy in the Green Police in the West, and I don't know how often they shift back and forth, um, knew that they were going to concentration camps, whether they knew at the time they were death camps or not, I don't know. 
Um, but they, the Germans wanted to hide the death camps from the German, as much as possible from the German people and from the Western peoples. They wanted to hide the death camps where in the East they were just sort of um, various murder squads going around and doing that. And the other thing, and just since we're talking about it, pushing was um, importate or importing of um, oil and fuel. Now, on that, I am right now basically importing all the oil and fuel I can from European countries and basically Saudi Arabia, Iran, and Iraq these countries in this part of the world that um, I can ship it in. I am not at this point willing to... Oh, well, they sunk this down here by me. Oh, he's just... Oh, he's sitting here. Which one is... Where is it? Oh, this has gone... Oh, okay. He was at port. I'm just noticing this now. He was at port and with the um, Brazil the war, and I didn't even realize because it was Vichy France, Brazil invaded um, Vichy's colony once Vichy um, became an, um, a combatant in, in the war. How interesting. Okay, so you, you get to come back over here. Let's send you out. So, um, Vichy, we lost our possession here in the New World. Um, I am not willing to take um, the various potentials of transporting in um, fuel or oil from across the Atlantic, because there are definitely some oil producers that have yet to go to war with me, as you can see. Mexico, Honduras, and I think that's... El Salvador and some of the other smaller nations there are at war with me and Brazil is at war and am I influencing I think I started influencing Argentina just recently no I haven't I want to we still have a fair amount though we're going to run out of them because I'm doing that I want to influence them get them more to my side um if it gets down lower, I'll, um, when it will get down lower, I'll shift some leadership over to that. But, so where I have um, secure, or relatively secure, which is basically all through here, I think is very secure actually, um, lines for importing oil and fuel, I will do so. So we're doing that. Okay, let's continue with the episode or the war. And see, like, got a few Sweden, and we won the Battle of Calcutta. And they're attacking me. Oh, okay. Where that mm, battle? Okay, good. We're kicking ass there. And we no longer will sell supplies to Haiti. Okay, the Azerbaijani Legion. Um, that's a nice picture of the patch with um some Indian soldiers in German uniform. Um. I'm pretty sure this is a black ice event. Um, I like the manpower. But note to whoever um, picked the image out to this. Um, Azerbaijanis are not Sikhs. Okay, people. Um, let's get educated. Azerbaijan. It's in here. I'm probably not circling exactly right because there's also Georgia up here and whatever. Um, 
these guys are Muslims. Okay, they are Muslims. Um, guys with turbans and beards, turbans and beards like this, with uh, um, sort of coming up like this. These guys are Sikhs or six. Um, I've heard, I've heard it pronounced both ways, and they are from this region in India. They have a, um, uh, a mixed religion between Hindu and um, Islam. They're not either one of them. They're they're their own their own religion. So those are um, Sikhs. Presumably that guy is not a Sikh because he's not in a turban. Um, so those are um, Indian troops, not um, Muslim Azerbaijanis. Okay, we'll take the event. And another, we want those because we're losing um, some maybe. Yeah, if you think I'm being really picky, you're probably right. But still, part of what I'm here for is history lesson. And I take images seriously. I'm not, um, you know, they go, hey, that's the best image we found. Well, okay, yeah, it looked like a nice, I mean... As, a, um, as things go, it was a nice image, you know, it was clear, it was well made, and all that kind of stuff. I like the patch, the unit patch that they put on there. And so it had its, you know, positive nature as a, you know, a photographic image type thing. Okay, I think we got too much winter there, so we're gonna stop that. Um, these mountains, let's look at the weather there. Oh, no, weather. Yeah. We'll wait till we get a few more units in there. So, um, yeah, um, you know, so I, and this is a thing that also, and I know I've said this before earlier in the series, um, it really, really bugs me when I'm watching a documentary and they're trying to tell me history and they're doing something about um, the Ardennes offensive and they show tanks rolling through Belgium but they're um, 1940 tanks with 1940 paint jobs and um, it's the tanks that move you know, through in the, for the Battle of France and not the ones you know, in late 1944 tanks, or vice versa. I see, you know, they talk about the invasion of France and they're showing a picture of a tiger tank or something that may be rolling through the Belgian countryside, but it's not history and it's um, bad and it gives people the wrong imp impressions. So images count a lot. Okay. And so then, I, but so then I have to wonder. Um, about um, what they're saying. You know, if they're as careless about the image, uh, are they also careless about the words that they're saying on the documentaries or writing in books? And I just watched a person presenting history within the last few days talking about World War II. And they called the song that the trumpeter was playing Little um, Marlene. Little Marlene, basically. Little Marlene. Well, it's Lily Marlene. And that, I, I you know, listen to the song. It's, you know, you look at the words and the pronunciation, and I've listened to... Marlena Dietrich singing it enough times, both in English and German, and it's Lily Marlene. And um, that's how it's said. So he's, the person didn't listen to the song. Do they really know what they're talking about? So I, I start to lose trust in um, what they're telling me if, when I pick up inconsistencies. Now, take that for what you will. When I present something here, 
Um, I don't always give the details right, and I know that. Um, and this is why I call what I'm doing here is historical commentary. Okay? What I'm saying now is historical commentary, not um, good historical um, details. When, and this is another one of my city capture events, when I um, write stuff for the events that I create, I do the best job that I can to um, make sure that is accurate. Now, maybe just Wikipedia research, and we all know Wikipedia, people can put in any kind of BS that they want. So, um, you know, it, it can be faulty, but I really, um, when I'm writing it out, because I'm not doing, you know, if I was doing this from a script, if I was making a, a documentary and I would, you know, at least create a general script, I would have notes with dates and um, other, you know, detailed facts, you know, X number of people killed or these divisions and you'd be able to list them. I'd have either a good set of notes that I know that I, what I was going to be covering or I would actually do it into a script form. Because we're playing a game, because I'm doing this extemporaneously, and this wasn't when I was talking about um, the song Lily Marlene, it wasn't that being done extemporaneously. It was it was in a prepared piece with an animation that went with it, that he was reading the script. So, um, you know, that's sort of where I'm I'm looking at at the difference between the the two. Um, so what I'm giving you here is historical commentary, meaning I'm commenting on history, giving my views, giving my thoughts based on what I I know on history. So um, don't take what I say here as fact in the sense that I think I'm getting it all 100% right. Um, before you, you know, use it in a book or try to quote it or some other sort of thing, look it up, not just so that you're doing your own research and I'm not BSing you, but just because what I'm saying here is stream of consciousness thought, not um, what I'm you know presenting as, as um, detailed historical research. So there's a difference. When I'm, whether it's titles or the description, obviously I haven't created a description because I don't have much of one for this. It's just... Um, Mushkovko taken, the city taken, okay. Um, that's the point of it. Oh, I didn't have any other facts about the city, and I can't put in a date because it's based on, to a large degree, as to when you take it in the game. Um, so it has to be dynamic. Because I'm not, I could make a, a history, must, you know, put Mushkovko was taken on such and such day historically. Could do that, and I've gone back and forth on the thoughts on how much that versus how much immersion at the moment we're looking at. But so what I'm giving you here verbally is is historical commentary, what I do in the descriptions as well as the photos as best as I can, meaning if somebody's fooled me over um, mislabeled photos, um, you know, I can be mislabeled, but I'm really hoping that I'm getting the right... Um, Russian cathedral pictured here as best I can, so you're getting what the Germans saw at the time, obviously in black and white, but you're getting um, good visual history there. Um, that's a different thing, so my, my mod is one thing, my historical commentary is another. So that's well, what I'm, you know, when I was criticizing the other image over it, seeing Sikh troops, and I'm presuming the... Um, person who made the image was looking for Muslim troops but um, and maybe didn't know or care that they were Indians but just thought they were Muslims but I can see that by the style of the turban and such that they were Sikhs not Muslims so that's how I work with things okay aviation search radar has advanced okay we're going to shift some leadership over to... Um, oh, good. We're winning there. I stopped this attack here. I'm waiting for um, Remke to get here to support the attack across that river. It was just too much. Okay. 
like we were saying, we got a victory, just it's a small one, but the Soviet Union loses or um, lose some national unity. We lose some dissent that we don't have any at the moment. It's just sort of a one-off. Found a photo. Okay. Man. Let's look back at We've, as we recently, I think they were off camera, but had um, the various um, Baltic States OPRO units. Um, the newer version of TRE has um, events covering and adding um, the locally raised um, police units in these different regions. So the, these OPROs are all Germans, though these are um, stationed in Lith Lithuania, Latvia, and Estonia. Um, but you will be also getting in the current versions um, the police elements that were raised locally of troops, often with um, fairly significant German oversight in the leadership roles, but um, they were, I think we're doing well enough that I don't need to build more SSUs. I know down here is sort of bad, so. I'm going to, and it's going to take a while to build them. We're going to build three more heavy transports, because that would... If I had them right now, it would ease my supply issues, most assuredly. And like we mentioned, we're going to lock that down. Well, we want that unlocked. And we're going to reduce. So that went away. Reduce the amount of research and increase it to diplomacy. We are still a little bit negative, but we'll shift that when a few more texts come up. If you notice, there's a lot fewer battles popping up because we're still playing at speed three. That's because of the winner situation. I am not pushing in there, not pushing. Okay, well, how bad is this? Okay, we were moving into this province because it was vacant and they've come in, so we're going to support the attack. Let's see if that changes the situation. We're moving into here. And this is one attack here that I'm grinding against and hoping to make it through so i want that victory province and i also want to look at um we had actually lost a little ground on um the surrender status now we're back at 80 we gone back down into uh, 70 somewhere in 79 but they gained the one point in descent and those um TRE events are designed partially, like I was saying, to give you history. Okay, coastal submarines. We're going to put them out here. Convoy rating and aggressive. Um, for, you know, to, to teach history. Because um, it does. And show, show the historical facts, but also in the game sense, um, as these towns, and I geared them, you know, lose one in descent, just to show the general taking of towns as it um, disrupts the Soviets. And that's why 
do it now. Okay, we talked before about um, decryption that the Germans didn't do a lot. They did do a lot with encryption. Their um, their ultra um, machine that the Allies called the Enigma. Do I have that right? I mean, is one was I called it the Enigma, the other the Ultra. Um, machine that was a significant and major um, step that basically went beyond anything like the Japanese did with their coding and I think beyond what the Allies did um, and it was down at the um, divisional level I've definitely seen um, machines in, um, or at the core level for sure, um, of Guderian, machines in the um, command half track that um, Guderian was riding around in for the invasion of France um, had an Enigma machine in it, or Ultra Machine, however you want to call it. Um, in it and they were at you know in in each submarine out there that they were using so the Germans had a very good um, level of encryption that they were using they just had um, overly much um, confidence in it um, Bletchley was ended up Bletchley Park wherever it's right here um, was reading the messages almost as fast if not faster than the Germans that were um, being sent to it because of their computing machine would decrypt it a bit faster than going through the process because you first had to receive the message you know and then punch set the dials and punch it all in the um, the Allies set up a, a little and then go through several things the Allies set up a better um, setup now saying all that when the Germans added an additional wheel there was a three or four month period that the um, the Allies lost reading um, I think it was the Navy that added the wheel if I'm not mistaken or was it the Air Force again like I was saying I'm doing historical commentary not historical um, detail here um, added the extra wheel to the to the Enigma machine it took them a while to get past that a few months so had the Germans been um, scrapping old machines and making new machines still using the basic same parameters but we go do a whole different set of uh, calculations it would have required um, the Allies to do a months worth of figuring things out to get to where they were again to rapidly decoding it. It, it yes it's nice to know what was done three months ago because it, it does help you but it's really nice to know what's happening exactly now um, to the best of my understanding unless they are machines that added the, the extra wheel a 1940 literally the same machine now they had different day settings and those are some of the things that um, you, know, you had to set there but a 1940s machine was still in use in 1944. They weren't every six months making a new set of machines, even working on the same principles, but a new set of machines, and then um, distributing out and taking the old ones in very carefully and checking serial numbers all and make sure that they collected them all and then, you know, junked them, scrapped them, except for one or two for, for historical purposes, but, you know, got rid of all of them so that you, you know if any of them got captured. They weren't going through this process of getting rid of the old and, and putting in new, whether increased levels of encryption or just simply changing the encryption protocols. To the best of my understanding, they weren't. So um, they just got overconfident. But they did do it right initially. And I like the way that they're doing this is that they improved convoy attack and that it's sending out messages better, but also visibility for the submarines, a big thing. Obviously, as subs were leaving here, the British were airstriking them. 
as much or more by opportunity in that they were flying missions over and not necessarily capturing, you know, getting uh, messages that, oh, such and such submarine is scheduled to leave. They were just know that submarines were out here, so they were um, doing air, you know, flying air missions to hopefully catch them day or night and strike at them. And it's, they had um, searchlights and other bright type lights mounted on aircraft that they would um, search around for or even with them off, fly around and try to spot them. And then once they spotted them, turn the lights on and then immediately attack before they could dive. And all you got to do is sort of puncture a, a sub one decent, you know, 30, 40 millimeter hole or something. And yeah, you can sort of jam stuff in there, but you can't really go down very far. You got to turn around and go back to base and get that properly repaired because the pressures aren't like a pressure on the, on a hole that's on a, um, surface boat if you put a um 30 millimeter hole through a motor torpedo boat um you have a fairly decent chance of if you have the right materials on board of stopping the water flow coming in uh, fairly effectively um and dealing with that and so you're not sinking and obviously you can have pumps working to to fight that while you're doing that going down to any pressure levels most realistic um, available measures, a 30, 40 millimeter hole in your submarine isn't going to, you know, you're not just going to be able to plug it with a, a cork plug or something to stop the water from coming in. It just isn't. So even a minor hit on the pressure hole of a um, submarine would um, minimum force it, if it can, back into the um, base. But a lot of the submarines were, were sunk because some were... Um, positional triangulation on the radio signals and that's what the Germans thought most of it was um, but it was also that um, with the encryption with the enigmas they they read the mail to realize oh meet up out here at this location and sometimes I think they were changing their maps and you know the labels of the locations would change but pretty quickly you figure it out and you figure out the new the new um, method and so that if you knew that they were operating here and since the AI isn't that really smart that, oh, well, and one of the big things they did was obviously, oh, this is where they're meeting up. Well, we'll send the convoys around here. And that's what they would, they would re redirect them as they were, you know, not just an, as, an, as for the next convoy, they would steer them around um, known locations and then send in hunter killer groups into the, the known location of them and sync them. So since the AI isn't that smart and more, it's not that dynamic of a game. And I could be interested in playing a game, North Atlantic convoy protection and attack game that just focuses on that. But as a grand strategy game, I don't want to be um, daily, hourly rerouting convoys and whatever else. So lowering the visibility here makes a lot of sense. And that, is how that's looking at that so i like that but um no we want to go here and okay i see ways just and let's also move just let's There we go. Oh good, we're getting there. I wanted to get it better. This route, um, the Volga will be a decent bank. Okay, yes, we'll do that. Defensive bank, but I didn't really want the front line to be here at the city. Oh, the, the allies were attacking over here. And they're attacking me. Now we are here, so we're going to attack there, and these guys are going to come here. Hit them in the flank. Um, no, I don't need any more Krupp cannons. I'm Krupp cannoned out. 
as long as we have supply we an organization we can do that okay jungle unit training we'll cancel that We're counterattacking, but I think we'll do okay. Hmm. Okay, we're gonna stop this. That was primarily a because they were empty for a while and this is was empty and we're going to stop that attack as well that's still empty we'll see if we can cut this um command leader unit off this one we're still going with we keep moving up to there because i want you to join the battle okay hungry Oh, sure, we'll give you metal. We'll give you metal, even just a little bit, that's fine. Well, now we're back up on lots and lots of fuel. Still not enough oil coming in. Okay, fighter ground crew training. Moving our heavy bombers. Don't have a lot, but we're using them as strategic bombing on the Soviets. Now, we still can possibly get in Persia, but we messed up for some reason. Iran did not want to join us the first time we asked. Okay, still not enough number of days have gone by. Okay. Even with the cost, I'm going to do this. The Berlin to Smolensk night train. Make sure we're on the right event. There we go. The Reichsbahn. That's German railway. From permission to restore the railroads. Give permission. Yes. I see 1%. Sure thing. I'm happy with that until July 43. It's eh, ways off. Six months. But it's only 1%. Supplies, eh, little, not so much. Metal, great. Have all the metal you want. And manpower, we're doing fine. So yes, we're going to give permission. Oh good, we got the swamp there. Alright, these guys are coming here. They're going there. You're counterattacking to try to reopen that up, but I think we'll hold. It's a swamp province, so we're moving a nice Jaeger division in. Try to at least. Yeah. Hope they won't even get her. It's cute, but. They're hitting this one hard. But we got some backup if we have to fall back. They might get that, but I don't think it'll do them any good.
Okay, so yes, we've lost Berlin to Mitz Night Train, which was 2% throughput, which was nice. For, I mean, yeah, now the supply is minus 10%. That's a lot, and we, we know that as long as we have the effect going. But throughput 22%. So that, we've had two more of those, so that would be 66% um, throughput increase, and that is a big increase in throughput. And that's everywhere. We were talking all in a, in a recent episode about um, the NSKK event improving um, throughput there. I think if they were to create several regions like this, like for that, and create the throughput just in specific regions would be better because theoretically, not that I'm complaining from winning the game issue, but I don't think um, that should increase supply throughput through um, Africa. Again, winning the game, happy to do that. And uh, we're going to wait until these guys get there to support. And they're almost there, but maybe I shouldn't have stopped that. They're here, so they're going to attack there. Take that province out. Oh. The grass spray is docked there, so we're going to... I don't know. Maybe I should send supplies around to there. I don't know. I mean, from a logistics standpoint, I absolutely should. But I'm just sort of wondering from a... Um, you know, loss of transports. It's bad. Good. Still holding Pretoria. I do have some events planned for expanded Tanganyika that will cover the... Um, well, we already have a few that cover um, Southwest Africa, the, the um, Germans that stayed in Southwest Africa, though... Um, there's you know pre-war events that just help a little bit. They're nothing like, and I eventually plan on. Ex I'm going to keep calling it Tanganyika, but I'm going to um, expand it into eventually, and eventually probably means for Hearts of Iron Four, but um, expand it into the Germans and their dealings with Southwest Africa and Cameroon. Don't know if we're going to do anything with BNN over here, um, but. Uh, definitely going to expand the events in there and expand the dealings with the um, uh, South Africa. There was a lot of support from the Afrikaans in um, South Africa for the Nazis. Um, some of it still manifest itself today with the pseudo Nazi flag style with the three sevens in it instead of the swastika um, don't know how much that party is still active I know I'm dating myself a little bit when that first came out um, some of it definitely does come from national socialist ideology some of it is just anti-British sort of pro-German type ideology um, they definitely set up um, concentration camps in South Africa. Well, concentration camps, I think, were primarily started by the British. Um, if I have my history right, and it was for the you know the Boer Wars and the British isolating, and they 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 were they they were horrific and. Um, to a degree, I do believe the British intended them to be horrific and not just incompetence or incapability of doing it because they wanted to, and they put in the families of the fighting men. Um, they wanted the, the fighting men to give up because their families were dying and being um, of starvation or disease or other bad things in these camps wanted them to give up so that they um, 
wouldn't keep fighting as opposed to just simply isolating the, the, the fighters, the boars, from the civil population. That's, that's one thing to do. It's one thing to go, oh, hey, these people are getting food and whatever from the civil population, so we have to isolate the civil population, which does mean con constraining them in a camp, concentrating them. But you can feed them, you can give them good medical um, supplies, good sanitation, and, and as time goes on, build better and better housing, and you can do all of that. That's one way to do it. The other way is to do it um, punishingly, and um, and again, I'm not necessarily advocating to put people in camps. I'm just stating that's one way to do it. The other thing is, is to make their existence miserable, obviously, the, the Nazis took it to the extreme of the death camp, the Soviets very very miserable situation that their camps were in sort of de facto death camps in the gulag system it's not an advocation or um, an acceptance of just different purposes and degrees the concentration camp so that um, there was a continuing a lot of residual um, negative feeling by the Afrikaans for the English the Germans, the German Empire through Southwest Africa had supported um, a fair number of rifles and other supplies sort of to counter the British position, sort of war by proxy um, kind of thing. And they set up camps again for um, German sympathizers in the Afrikaans elements in South Africa. Don't quite, I've done a little research on this, getting some pre preparation, don't quite know how pervasive or how many you know people were in them or how big I don't think they were the punishing type camps that the British used during the Boer War but they continued and because certain political symbols were banned Nazi German type symbols the symbol for the um, the pro-German and again I'm gonna continue to do a little more research how Nazi how National Socialist it was and it was definitely because I've seen from pre-war photos in the region, and again, I don't know how popular they were, because you can always get a half or a tenth of a percent of people, which, if they're large enough, can mean a few thousand people to come to a big rally that's national social. Is it just, again, a, a fraction of one percent, or is it a ten or twenty percent of a population like the Afrikaans? I don't really know right offhand. I'm going to do some more research. And also, what it was historically doesn't mean that through a game process, I don't think you couldn't necessarily, you know, influence it by putting more support behind it. So there definitely was a, you know, swastika national um, socialist support element to it. But once the war started and symbols were banned, the symbol for the, the pro-Nazi element was a short little segment of barbed wire with the barb right there. Because it, and they wore them as lapels in the camps. Because and outside the camps, because of everybody being put into barbed wire camps, so a, a little bit of barbed wire became the symbol for the Nazis in South Africa. So there was a lot of support. So that's um, sort of my ultimate goal for Tanganyika. Um, I know it's not nearly as popular as um, uh, TRE, and it, it started out as part of TRE, but it was partially a demonstration. Of what TRE was going to be, and it was partially a more than more so than TRE as a what if um, mod. It is all based in historical facts. All the event, all the event images. Um, I'm using real images now. Sometimes repurposing the image meaning, and again, it's maybe sort of lying, and I'm very cautious about this. And I hope it it's understood as I'm trying to. Um, talk about and show things is that I'm using some pictures of like Ascari from World War One I. I know just that I don't know how explicit if it should be more explicit and we don't know exactly what the Ascaris would have looked like in World War um, two for the Germans because there were none so if I'm showing you something that didn't happen and this is sort of one of the reasons I kept Tanganyika separate is Germany never occupied, reoccupied Tanganyika. Would they have, probably, but I'm not sure, would they have dressed their Ascaris, like I have one picture of a um, black, you know, sub-Saffrican Arab, or sub-Saffrican African Arab, meaning a black man who had been enculturated into the Arab world, um, 
but as Negro as you want a picture, and if you've seen the picture, and he's wearing a um, a German sort of Africa Corps type uniform with the Arab um, Legion patch on it, you know, to the uh, sort of Feldmutz type desert hat. And so that all was very, would they have gone with that? Probably because it was a very efficient uniform and they were already making it. Or would they have made the sort of African tan Fez-like um, setup of the earlier Tanganyika? There's a reason for that, too, is to sort of, you know, hark back to your father's or grandfather's day, join these old elite unit type thing. And it's not that expensive to make um, 30, 40,000, you know, if you're going to do a large number of them or even 10,000, you know, Fez hats or something. Because they did it. Obviously, we've seen photos for um, the Muslim legions. So I don't know. So when I'm talking about a um, events that didn't happen, I'm having to obviously not use the pictures in their um, real state, but all of the um, uh, Reich Colonial Bund posters are all real. All of that stuff is real. The what if is what if Germany got what if what if two things what if Germany had supported the people in their former colonies more un, while they were under um, British occupation. And then two, what if they made it down here? So we're playing what ifs. But I'm basing all the what ifs within a historical um, reality, if you will. Um, so I'm not just, um, you know, what what if um, Brazil decided to, you know, have a big Nazi party? No, we're, we're talking about... Um, real German influence in the region. So it, it's so that's one of the reasons I'm sort of continuing to keep it separate is that there's a, um, a much more of a what if element. And it's more than I can do a Moscow taken and I may do that someday event like I did with the, the photos. Like, a, you know, we've been seeing photos of German soldiers taking a um, Soviet city and taking some photos around there and showing what the city looked like after it was captured. Obviously, I can try to dig up some pre-war and pre-war photos of Moscow and do a Moscow taken event or Leningrad taken event and show you real photos, but obviously they wouldn't be photos of the city after Germany took it. It would just be photos of the city in 1940-something and preferably before the war. Um, and this is bogging down into too bad, so we're going to stop this as well. Okay, yeah, we lost. Um, so, you know, that's a lot less, you know, still, what if they took it, but it doesn't, you know, I'm not just showing generic bombed out cities, but I might, I don't know. So we do have a, you know, an element of what if. Now these guys here. Wow, look at that. Look at that. Look at all those troops. Yeah, we're going to retreat. I don't need that province. Not with them holding this one. We'll wait for our spring offensive after the mud clears. Okay, well, we've won that battle, so we're going to stop this battle here. Until these guys can get across and catch up. We're going to clear out all this part of Taken in Morocco here eventually. Yeah, I don't think they're going to reinvade. Yes, we want SS self-propelled rocket artillery. Yeah, you can attack, but you're not going to get anywhere. We're not with that light outfit. You can attack there, but uh, we still have some organization. Oh, big victory parade. What did we just win? Yes, we like organizational regain. 
Okay, we won here, I guess. Okay, well, cool. Any of these guys have organization? Yes. So this they're being attacked, and I think they're just going to shatter themselves on me, but I don't know for sure. You got organization, so you go up there. Oh, Thorin Gare. Uh oh, motorized division shattered. Yeah, these will definitely accept more, more so than some of the others just because they're Hungarian, they're a light motorized element that is a nice um, division, but not... Okay, we've lost the... But we've got more manpower, obviously, in supplies. The 15th Totenkopf standard. These guys were supplying that city. Now we're going to supply it to here. Make sure we get enough supplies in. Sending some troops up to here. They made it now. They are not there yet. Where are they? No. Well, they're here. Oh, okay. Well. We're going to wait for next episode. I'm... Thinking maybe... Sending in the Mountain Division. Yes, what I'm worried about is... I think I can cancel it. I'm worried about if I, because sometimes, and I don't understand always why, it, how it selects it. When I select this province to invade, it decides to invade it the next one, whether it's the fortifications or something that makes it go somewhere other than intended. Because I'm happy to, and I just don't want, I don't want to stick some forces here. I know I could try to air supply it, but I prefer not to create a pocket that I can't send in supplies via ship or reinforcements via ship. And here, okay, these guys have made it here. And these guys have made it here. And we're going to check out Vladivostok for possible invasion. And if that doesn't work out, we're going to see about coming up here for possible invasion. Again, I think, because this is worth 15 victory points. I mean, um... Wrong. I know 15 from 80 isn't exactly a 100, but I think it might cause a few other stuff that would get us a, a near war winning result. So, and I'm going to think about also with this winner here using this time to upgrade my SS units that I think I could like vinking here that I think I could get back to the front upgraded much better I think that's a good idea so okay next episode oh well let's yeah no next episode we'll cover the Japanese it's just running way too long um, not I've enjoyed talking um, to you and I hope you've enjoyed me pontificating on my thoughts um, 
So, see you next time. Thanks for watching. Thanks for liking the videos. Please post comments, either what I'm saying or what I'm doing here. Either way, love to hear from you.